all right and welcome back and this is the chip master in this class we're going to look at the internal pin definitions of the pch right in this course i'm going to explain every single pin of the pch which is the intel series 7 right the same goes for all other um series of chipsets all right so uh this is the intel series 8 as you can see this is a dela inspiron uh n 5420 which is a quanta ro8 board as you can see Right, this is the block diagram and we are looking at the HM77 which is the panther point right so I'm going to explain every single pin definitions as you can see we have 20 to 26 pages right so I'm going to go to each pin and uh, and I will explain all these sections of the PCH right as you can see right see PCI we have observed so I'm going to go to every single pin function definition of the PCH right so uh, I have here the data sheet on this section is the Intel series 7 series Intel 7 series uh, CPU chipset sorry right and uh, we're going to look at the functional block diagram so we have a basic understanding of what I'm going to teach you of the Intel series 7 pin definitions right so I'm going to there here it is so this is the block diagram of the Intel Series 7 chipset as you can see right so first part we have the FDI box which is the Intel flexible Dis display right Intel flexible display interface this is only available for the Intel platform right for the AMD platform it's different right so this is the FDI box as you can see FDI RXP RXP right negative right synchronization right all these i'm going to explain all these pins right next we have the controller link right as you can see controller link we have the pci express interface right pci express right we have also here the sata interface which is for sata we have a different like for hard drive cd ram drive right and uh the temperature but alert and all these signals that are gpio pins as you can see this is the sata interface we have the power management as you can see right such as the famous rsm reset we have depot okay right slps 3 slps 4 slps 5 all these signals will be explained right and uh this is a power management section this is a very important and crucial section in to, to know during the maintenance process we have the intel high definition order which is the sound card bus this is your sound card bus so we have hda reset we have sync we have block b clock signal data output signal data input right all these consist of your high definition audio interface right this is your audio bus sound card bus this is connected to your sound chip or your audio chip whether it's Realtek or idt or what so on we have the direct media interface which is the dmi bus which is the communication or the direct communication between the pch and the cpu right this is the dmi 3c3 txp positive negative which is and a pair each pair three pairs rx which is receiving and tx which is the transmission transmission or sending and receiving and the dmi com this is the compensation input and output for the dmi bus right we have the SM bus, right, which is used to communicate with the, the RAM when we are reading the RAM to read the EEPROM chip on the RAM. This is your SM bus, right? System management, right? This is a system management, as you can see, intruder, which is a part of the RTC section, right? Uh, alert and so forth. These are for your various processor hot to indicate the CPU over temperature signal. And this is controlled through a, um, their SM bus. Right, we have analog display as you can see the CRT monitor which is on red, green, blue, which is your horizontal and vertical sync. All these are your CRT. So basically the PCH supports the output of digital to analog. So there's an analog to digital to analog conversion that's done inside the PCH and that information is sent to your CRT monitor. We have LVDS, which is your differential signal or low voltage differential signal. As you can see, LVDS, LVDS, we have A to B, A to B, which is three pairs. We have clock, right? Each LVDS section needs a pair of clock, right? We have the clock and data, which is to use to read the screen information inside of the screen. The backlight enable signal, right? Backlight control signal, right? All these are controlled by the LVDS module inside of the PCH, right? We have the digital display interface. This is for your HDMI. So this is your HDMI output, which is DDD, DDB. We have a total of B, C, D, A, B, C, D. 
right and this is your clock right the clock your, 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 your hdmi needs clock because this is a high frequency transmission of signal right hpd hot plug detection all these signals i'm going to explain right jtag this is a reserve section for intel intel this is reserved for only intel which is used for a debugging test mode this is only used by intel so this is not really important we have over here this fan the fan speed control which is the control of the fan right platform environmental connection interrupt right this is a fan pc which is connected to your io controller right and we have gpio which is a general purpose input output these pins will be configured after reading the bios after getting the apok signal then it will configure the gpio pins to send the clock signals and so forth we have here the miscellaneous signal which will consist of the internal vrmen and deep sleep vrmen right the speaker srt reset and rtc reset all these are part of the miscellaneous signal which is in the rtc section we have an rtc clock x1 and x2 right module inside we also have a usb um, section inside as you can see we have usb over current over current one two six zero two four six over current for various section like your bluetooth your usb and regular usb ports right positive and negative transfer of usb data right interrupt interface this is to your serial irq your serial irq this is an interruption from the PCH to report to the CPU that a particular device wants to access the CPU, right? And this is known as a Siri IRQ. This is a this is a very important signal. And this thing, when each time this PCH interrupts the CPU, that data is then passed through the DMI bus to the CPU, right? So I'm going to explain all of that in um, this course. We have clock inputs, right? Clock requests. See, all these are clock requests. Each device needs to send a request to the clock module inside of the PC so that it can output the correct clock frequency, right? So it must send an input request signal uh, of the, the amount of clock and then it will output the correct clock for each device right so we have input clocks which is a request and then we have output clock which is the, the exact the correct clock going to each device is such as a pci right we have your your graphics card the dmi bus the display port you write all these and your 25 megahertz reference crystal right there's a 25 megahertz reference crystal on this pci that is used as a reference clock right we have here the lpc which is the firmware interface lpc firmware right interface which is you know we have the LAD 0 to LAD 3 we have LPC frame right L R R LPC RQ which is a form of an interrupt and this is control this is a communication between the PCH and the IO controller or the EC right this is the SPI bus the SPI bus this is the SPI bus so we have chip select 0 chip select 1 so if there are two BIOS chip on the board then you'll know this will indicate to the PCH which one of the BIOS it should read. So if it's a chip select 0, which is BIOS 1, chip select, chip select 1, which is BIOS number 2, right? Signal input, signal output on the clock, which is the SPI bus, right? Processor interface. This is the processor interface. It is the main signals which is connected to the CPU to the PCH. As you can see, we have RC in A20 gate term trip. We have proc power good. All these are the power good signal. I'm going to explain all these signals also right we have the pci interface right right so the clock can loop back is that clock that is sent back to the pch from the crystal from the clock from a clock internally generated out externally and sent back to the clock right the pci reset right all these see frame ird ready trd ready all these are passed from intel series 4 and they are con and they are carried over into the intel series 7 5 6 and 7 right it's the same Right, so I'm going to explain all these signals in the in this course. So we're going back to the schematic now, and uh, as you can see, we have a uh, various um, section, right, for the PCH Intel Series Seven. Right, this is your Intel Series Seven. So I'm going to explain every single section of this PCH, every single pin, and their known functions. Right, so I am going to. This is a demo video, as you all know. Right, if you want full videos, you have to pay, and I will have everything available as I said before at the end of this month all videos will be ready right so I'm going to start off with the the DMI section okay this is your LVDA section all right so I'll start off with the DMI section all right so this is the DMI bus so this is a DMI bus as you can see it has a total of uh, 16 wires right a total of how many 16 
so yeah dmi bus consists of 16 wires as you can see so first we have a dmi 10 rxn so this is your r n which is negative this is your negative as you can see we have another dmi rxp see n 0 rx n1 rxn2 this is your negative rxp0 rxp1 rxp2 this is your positive section as you can see so this is the positive side all right uh, here again we have another pair so this is a total of one group two group all right another three group here and four groups so it's a total of 16 wires right so we have here we have dmi this is receiving this is sending it, it is sending out and this is an incoming as you can see so we have dmi txp txn0 dmi txn1 to 3 right this is your negative this is your negative section again so this is your positive right this is your negative and p down here is your positive which is your dmi txp0 dmi txp1 to 3 right so this is your DMI bus and DMI stands for direct media interface, right? This is um, a communication between the CPU and the PCH, right? For the AMD, it's called UMI, which is stands for Unified Media Interface, right? So there's a different naming conventions between uh, Intel and AMDs, all right? We have here, down below, we have the DMI comp, Z comp. This is your DMI input. This is your DMI input, compensation input signal. As you can see, it is powered by a 1.05 volt underscore PCH, which is a PCH core supply, right? So this 1.05 volt underscore PCH is coming through a resistor. This resistor is known as a precision resistor. As you can see, this is a very precise resistor. If any fault happen to this resistor at any given time, then your DMI bus won't work. Then you will get, you can't run the code. You can't run the debug card to get a code right so your debug art which is plugged into the um it's connected to the lpc bus or if the motherboard supports direct plugging in of the um debug card into the wi-fi slot right then you can go ahead then what will happen if this resistor is faulty then it will not run the code you can't run a code because this is used to compensate this is a comp see dmi uh, comp this is your compensation input right this is a precision resistor of 49.9 right f, f farad right as you can see we have another one here this is a dmi uh this is dmi compensation output right and it's also connected to the P precision resistor same resistor now this is a dmi bias it is known as a uh this is a bias right this is a another precision resistor and it is a 750 farad resistor as you can see dmi2 bias right this is the bias it is this is faulty then it will not run code right you will get no display and you cannot diagnose the board mean that there is a problem so you should check these resistors all right and then if there is a fault replace them and your problem should be solved of no display another thing that you need to check during the maintenance process is the bus itself if you have a dummy card if you have a cpu dummy uh dummy load cpu you can connect it to the cpu slot and measure the diode value of this section right this section should be roughly it should be roughly about three three hundred to four hundred ohms right when measuring during the uh, maintenance process you connect the dummy load into the cpu socket and this the value the diode value when you measure when you hit the value on your multimeter on the dummy load cpu you should get roughly uh th as i said 300 all right let me let me get my type tool all right you should get roughly 300 oh, okay yeah, you should get roughly 300 to 400 ohms okay all right and this is okay if at any given time when you are measuring this section when you're measuring this section and you're not getting any value that means there's a connection with there's a connection disconnection with the cpu and the pch right something is wrong internally on the motherboard right so this is how you can uh, check the dmi bus 
right using the dummy load tester by plugging it inside of the cpu socket and you measure the resistance you should get between 300 to 400 ohms right if there is no resistance infinity or overloop on your multimeter then there's a problem there's a break inside the circuit in the board between the cpu and the dmi bus which is going to cause no display or when you're using your debug card you cannot get a code reading all right so this is a demo video right if you want full videos then you have to pay right and i hope you learn something and uh will explain every single detail pin of this pch as you can see right and um this is chipmaster and thanks for watching